Good day everyone! Welcome to Lit Sessions with Mom Tess. For today, we shall be discussing the first lesson on various dimensions of Philippine literary history from pre-colonial to contemporary. This lesson on various dimensions of Philippine literary history from pre-colonial to contemporary will begin with an understanding of literature. And so we will discuss the various literary forms, structures, definitions, and characteristics of literature. In this session, we are going to try to answer two questions. What is literature? And why is it important to study and appreciate literature, especially the various literary works of Filipino authors? At the end of the lesson, you are expected to Number one, define literature. Number two, explain why understanding and appreciating literature is important. Number three, discuss the relationship of literature to other fields of discipline such as psychology, natural science, history, morality or ethics, fine arts, and religion. And value literature as a collective expression of a people's culture, tradition, and civilization. What is literature? Literature is a body of oral and written works that expresses human thoughts, feelings, and emotions in a beautiful and artistic language. To be able to clarify this definition, let us take a look at some of the significant words in this definition. Literature is a body of oral and written works. It is a body of oral and written works because it is a collection or compilation of works that have been handed down from generation to generation. There are two types of literature, one that is written and the other one is oral. Oral literature is spoken literature of the ancient civilizations, often referred to as oral tradition delivered or transmitted by word of mouth. Literature expresses human thoughts, feelings, and emotions. Are you familiar with SHE? S-H-E SHE stands for Significant Human Experiences. Literature reflects or expresses significant human experiences. Literature is also a form of human expression whose language differs from ordinary language. That is why literature is expressed in a beautiful or artistic language. Especially with the advent of technology, most literature has been kept and preserved. Many literary masterpieces are appreciated to this day for its lasting intellectual value and artistic merit. To quote Ezra Pound, an American poet and critic, Great literature is simply language charged with meaning to the utmost possible degree. What are the characteristics of literature? Literature, first and foremost, is for appreciation and enjoyment. We don't study literature for the sake of memorizing names and titles or defining words that we do not understand. Literature gives us pleasure in the sense that it takes us to a whole new world where we meet new people, encounter various cultures, or know different places. We enjoy literature like the songs that resonate our feelings and emotions or the poems that reflect our thoughts and ideas. But literature can also be useful. We learn from literature as it is about life. It makes us ponder about certain actions and decisions that are reflected in the pages that we read or in the dramas that we watch. Literature is also timeless. The classics or the great works of literature do not lose its beauty and relevance even in the passage of time. The true, good, and beautiful remain the same even when time has passed. Literature is universal. 
it appeals to all kinds of people from all walks of life. The love, anger, pity, hurt, pain, happiness, and successes that are contained in the various pages of literature relate to people regardless of race, age, gender, social status, and other considerations. This is because literature reflects significant human experiences. Finally, literature is creative. It is an art form that uses language as a tool for expression. As such, the language used is not the ordinary language of day-to-day -day living. It uses select words that are meant to express the ideals of humanity. The two great classifications of literature are prose and poetry. Prose may be subdivided into fiction and non-fiction. Some examples of fiction are fairy tale, legend, mythology, novel, short story, fable, and parable. Examples of non-fiction are autobiography, biography, newspaper, journal, and magazine. On the other hand, poetry may be categorized into three, narrative poetry, dramatic poetry, and lyric poetry. Under narrative, we have ballad, metrical romance, metrical tale, and epic. Under dramatic, we have tragedy, farce, comedy, and melodrama. Under lyric, we have elegy, ode, song, and sonnet. What is prose and what is poetry, and how do they compare with one another? Prose follows natural patterns of everyday speech and communication. This means that it observes a grammatical structure with sentences and paragraphs. It is the ordinary form of spoken or written language. On the other hand, poetry observes deliberate patterns such as rhythm and rhyme. Most have a formal metrical structure. This means repeating patterns of beats. Poetry also incorporates more figurative language. It is visually standing out on a page with narrow columns, varying line length, and more white space on a page than prose. Poetry also has deliberate line breaks. Let me present to you an example of prose. As you can see, the text is made up of a series of sentences that form a paragraph. The natural patterns of everyday speech is followed. This text is lifted from Stephen Havelianus without seeing the dawn. From where the river carved the hill in the west, they saw the flood and rushed toward them with a mighty roar, rolling out over the house and work animal and growing field like an incredible sheet of dirty canvas, dashing against the dikes with a sibilant hiss and enveloping everything in its path in a deadly embrace. Mother of God! Manang Juliana shrieked and she leaped down the stairs, followed by the men, and Manang Petra, who kept crying as she ran. Run, Lucing, the baby! But already, Lucing had snatched the sleeping baby from its mat on the floor and hurrying down the stairs, carding and her heels. In the yard, Bag-o was running round and round the tree to which he had been tethered, snorting madly, and his eyes were bloodshot. Run on ahead! Harding shouted over the roar of the onrushing flood, I'll free the carabao first. But she clung to his arm. No, no, she gasped. You'll drown if you stay. So Carding abandoned the doomed beast. He took the child from his wife's arm and they ran toward the hill. They ran on and on, sometimes stumbling, sometimes falling, like people drunk and their breaths came out hot and short, and their hearts in their breast pounded like these heavy pestles upon a mortal full of palai. Now, 
Notice how the text in this poem differs from prose. Here, there are no sentences, but rather, we see words that are placed in a line. These lines compose or make up a stanza. The oral reading of this piece of poetry from Pinay's letter from Brunei by Ruth Elenia S. Mabanglo will give you its rhyme and rhythm. I am a teacher, wife and mother, a woman kissed by perfume, powder and silk, intimate with the washtub, pots and bed, seemingly weary and bored, I seek to go abroad. Always, the same man sits at the head of the table. He reads the newspaper each morning. He waits for his coffee and smokes. While I am restrained by the crib and books, I apply my lipstick and let the faucet drip. He does not stir, even if the pots burn or the children whimper. Let us now have a close look at fiction. Fiction is a narrative that depicts the imaginary or non-factual life of a character whose details are revealed to the readers only upon the discretion of the writer. This means that fiction is a representation of everyday life in which readers see as much or as little as the writer allows. Fiction is an inventive work of an author whose elements such as plot, setting, characters, conflict, other details and descriptions are purely fanciful and unreal. Here are the different types of fiction. Number one, fairy tale. It is a fantastic or make-believe story about kings, queens, princess, and princesses and their faraway lands. Number two, legend. It is a story of how things came about or about the beginning of things. Number three, myth. It is a story involving gods and goddesses. Number four, short story. It is a narrative that can be finished at a single occasion. Number five, novel. It is longer than a short story and is divided into chapters. Number six, fable. A story that usually have animals as characters and contains lessons. And finally, number seven, parable. It is an allegorical story from the Bible that is used by Jesus to teach a truth, a lesson, or a moral principle. If fiction is based on the imagination and fancy of a writer, what now is non-fiction? Non-fiction is a work of literature that primarily deals with factual accounts. It may be a narrative presentation of real-life events or an exposition of true accounts as they occur or occurred in a particular time period. However, it should be noted that non-fiction works that present the beliefs or points of view of others may not necessarily be a testament of its truth or veracity but merely pointing out that others consider such to be true. In short, it is prose writing of real events and real people based on facts. Here now are the different types of non-fiction. Number 1. Autobiography An account of a person's life written by him or herself. Number 2. Biography, an account of a person's life written by another. Number three, newspaper, a collection of various articles on current events. Number four, magazine, a collection of various articles on various topics such as home and living, lifestyle, food, travels, movies, and many more. And number five, journal, a daily record of personal events or happenings. Let us now move on to the different types of poetry. 
As mentioned earlier, there are three types of poetry, narrative poetry, lyric poetry, and dramatic poetry. Narrative poetry is a type of poetry that tells a story in verse or stanza form. It does not have rhymes but have refrains or repeated verses. Lyric poetry, on the other hand, is a type of poetry that is meant to be sung or chanted to the accompaniment of a musical instrument. It expresses the feelings and emotions of the poet. Finally, dramatic poetry is a presentation of a drama in verse or metered form. It is written to be performed on stage before an audience. Here are the different examples of narrative poetry. Number one, epic. It is a long narrative poem that tells the adventures and remarkable deeds of a hero or heroine, usually possessing supernatural powers, aided or guided by gods and goddesses in the achievement of his or her quest. It depicts the culture of the people who owns it. Number two, ballad. It is a poem that tells stories of ordinary folks set in verse, usually presented in quatrains with a specific rhyme scheme such as ABCB or ABAB pattern and is meant to be sung or chanted. Quatrains mean having four lines in one stanza. Number three, metrical romance. It is a poem that tells the stories of royalty and nobility and of chivalry and knighthood. Number four, metrical tale. It is a poem written in several verses relating the happenings of ordinary people and their everyday concerns. Meanwhile, the examples of lyric poetry are Number 1. Sonnet, a lyric poem with 14 iambic pentameter lines. What do we mean by iambic pentameter? It means having 5 lines, each with a stressed and unstressed syllable. Number 2. Elegy, a lament for the dead or a reflection about death. Number three, Ode, an exaltation, praise, or glorification of an object, event, or person. And lastly, number four, Song, a melodious poem intended to be sung, has harmony and rhythm. Now, let us move on to some examples of dramatic poetry. Number one, Comedy. It is a type of drama that is meant to amuse or entertain. Usually, it ends happily. Generally, it aims to expose a societal issue or problem or to criticize the vices and foibles of society so as to correct or mend. Number 2. Tragedy Based on the Aristotelian concept, it is an imitation of a serious action complete in each part and of a certain magnitude, written in an embellished language, acted out, not narrated, producing through pity and fear a sense of catharsis. The six component parts of a tragedy are spectacle, song, diction, thought, character, and plot. Number three, farce is the extreme form of comedy characterized by exaggeration, extravagance, deliberate absurdity or nonsense, and physical humor. Number four, melodrama. It is characterized by sentimentality where the virtuous suffer continuously at the hands of the villainous. Emphasis of this drama is on the non-struggle of the main character in the struggles or conflicts that he or she encounters. Now that we have already identified and defined the different forms, structures, and characteristics of literature, it would also be good to understand why we need to study literature. So why do we study literature? It is 
to better understand our own people, our rich culture and heritage as Filipinas, which have been handed down to us by our ancestors. By studying Philippine literature, we get to know the diversity of our people, their dreams and aspirations, their stories of successes and failures, their struggles and experiences that made them a unique race. It is also to appreciate the unique artistry and talents of many a Filipino writer and author and to know that our talent is comparable to others around the world. This will lead us to realize that Filipino writers are at par with other writers of other nations and that our ancestry is as great and as noble as that of others. Lastly, to realize that our literature has its imperfections and limitations which may have been caused by certain factors in our history as a people or as a nation. By knowing so, we can take measures to improve our craft and overcome the barriers that prevent us from achieving excellence. How is literature related to other fields of discipline? Natural Science the things that we see in the natural world provide setting and inspiration for many works of literature. History History and literature are very closely related. History makes an account of the different literary pieces that have been produced in different periods. On the other hand, literature mirrors the things that have happened in history. Religion the greatest book ever written is considered to be the Bible. It is the concrete manifest of humanity's faith in one supreme being. Morality Morality makes a distinction between right and wrong or good and bad. This particular distinction is demonstrated also in literature. These are often embodied by characters who face real-life situations, conflicts, or dilemmas. Psychology Psychology is the study of the human mind and behavior. And in literature, many authors and writers find an expression of their innermost thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and values in their writing. Various characters that we encounter in the stories that we read in literature also exhibit how they think and behave when confronted with different conflicts. Fine Arts Literature, like any of the other forms of fine arts, such as music, painting, architecture, and sculpture, is a form of human expression. True words, poets, Writers and authors are able to express themselves in a creative or artistic way. This concludes our lesson for today. See you next time!